and welcome back to another gripping session of building a Rams S21 outbound plane. Uh, this is episode 24, and in this episode, I'm going to uh, fabricate and install the battery box, uh, the master solenoid, which I actually deviate from the manual per some other builders' recommendations. Uh, and we actually move the master solenoid from the original location, but we get the master solenoid installed. Uh, then we get the starter solenoid installed onto the firewall, and then there's also a uh, optional charging jack uh, that gets installed under the firewall, and we get that in, that that put on also. So with that, uh, let's start building that battery box. I'm going to get the uh, battery box for the Titan uh, put together. Seems like it's an independent process that we can just throw in there. It's on page 11.7 of the Titan manual, and then the parts manual parts diagram is 1104 and 1103 and there's a fairly small pile of parts that I got out of the firewall forward box and should go together fairly simply. Uh, just a quick reminder that this battery box is for the Odyssey PC545MJ which I think is the uh, the reinforced edition. They've got one that's less reinforced that's $50 less um, Odyssey has changed their serial numbers and their identity and there's an equivalent um, so that you may not find it exactly listed like that. I found mine on Amazon for much less than um, uh, Aircraft Spruce or Sporties and others so I, I did get mine off Amazon. Okay, where I've gotten so far with this is they have some angle brackets that go down here and they get riveted in facing that direction. I prime my rivets for stainless steel because they are stainless steel rivets. You have that choice. Then the rest of the box just goes together. There's some pre-drilled holes on one side. Then they tell you to put the battery in and kind of close up the sides so it's snug but not restricting. And that's why you can see a little bit of an edge here. And then this is not drilled. So then you pre-drill this or pre-drill. Then you drill this out. But if you come over here, it gets a little confusing. Because you got rivet on top, bolt, bolt. Then you've got rivet, rivet, and a bolt. And these two lines run parallel. So it looks like you've got a rivet and a bolt right next to each other. And, uh, and all the bolts go back to your frame. And from watching Project S21 Project, I noticed the battery actually tilts back a little against the frame uh, because the frame doesn't sit flush on the floor it actually tilts back and clamps onto the steel frame so from here we're, we're just going to finish putting the rivets in drill out for the bolts and then we'll attach with the miscellaneous clamps and stuff onto the frame what i did to figure out the placement of the box is i put the bottom bolts in through the clamps and that bottom cage and i just tightened them loosely so that I can move the box right or left. And we know this is gonna be a bolt here. And on this side, you have one rivet and one bolt. And you've gotta determine where that other bolt is gonna go. So since this side is definitely a bolt, I moved the, the box right and left until I had this lined up with a clamp on this bar. I'll secure it, and then that'll tell me exactly where I need to drill to determine, uh, it looks like the bolt, it could go up here, could go down. It, it, once you get the right side set, that'll let you figure out where you have to drill the left side for the bolt and the rivet, because you've got one rivet and one bolt. Uh, it may not make sense as you're looking at this, but when you get your parts out, you'll understand what I'm doing. Okay, the uh, battery box is in. Uh, I did have one little problem. Uh, as you remember, the bolt on this side, on the right side, is already, the hole is pre-drilled for the bracket. And then you come over here, and you have to size where this bracket's going to go based on where the position is on these bars. And there is a hole drilled out for a rivet. Well, what I didn't realize is the rivet head, they, they call for going from forward to backward with a rivet. The rivet was right against this bar. So I had to drill out the stainless steel rivet, and stainless steel rivets don't like to be drilled out and pop the rivet in from the back side and I had to put a brass washer in there um, because when I drilled out I didn't like the size of the hole so um, other than that it went pretty smooth 
uh, except crimping, crimping these brackets and getting these bolts through is a bear. That, that took a little bit of time, uh, but I got it in. Now I've got to do the bar across here. The ground goes over here, and those are all pretty simple. The uh, last step is to hook up this cable to a tang, which goes through a bushing and then actually comes in from the bottom of the skin underneath the plane. Uh, the tang's got to get filed down a little bit. It, gets, it comes in contact with this cage frame, um, and that's a pretty tough tang. So uh, you got to cut, a, grind down a little bit of that, and then that will go to my negative terminal, but we are not going to hook up the battery right now. Um, but we've got that done. I'm going to deviate a little bit from the manual uh, with the master solenoid, and I'll explain why. Uh, here in the diagram, you show you get your battery, your master solenoid, and then your starter solenoid. Uh, you've got power going to the master uh, all the time, and then when you, this is your master switch, which is actually a ground wire. So when you complete the ground, you connect the master, which then sends juice uh, to other places in the plane. But the power from the battery to the master, whoop, there's a cat attack. Move on, cat. Move on the other way then, cat. Okay. So, uh, but the whole time, <laughs> you, okay, we'll pick up where we left off. But the whole time, you've got juice running from the battery all the way to the master that's constant. And when you switch your master, you're just pushing it beyond that. Uh, this master is uh, instructed to be put on the firewall, which means you've got live juice coming in front of the firewall all the time. Um, I've seen some others do it, and it makes a lot of sense, is to take your master and put it back on your battery box. So you've got juice from the battery box to the master, which is about six inches. And then when you turn your master switch on, uh, you then send juice up to the panel. Uh, so you don't have this live connection up to the panel 100% of the time. So I like that installation. So I'm going to go ahead. I've got to take that battery box off. And I'm going to install a bracket onto the battery box and mount the master uh, solenoid on that bracket. Uh, run a jump wire from the battery to the solenoid. And then my long wire up to the panel which will only be live once I activate the master from the ground wire that goes up to the panel. So it seems like a, a safer and better installation, so I'm going to go that route. The, uh, the parts page is 11A01 and 11A02. The only difference, this is uh, attached with a 3 16th bolt, an A and 3A, but they have a thick washer, but they also call for a large washer, which you, I had to dig around to get that out. Uh, that has I haven't seen that before, but other than that it looks like it's just a straight attachment So rather than put it on the firewall, I'm gonna do the same attachment onto my battery box. I Just took a piece of 0 0.040 aluminum that I had cut it in and made a bracket bent it around Riveted it from the inside so the rivets wouldn't get in the way of the battery put four rivets on each side and then just mounted the solenoid using the hardware that was provided. So I'll put the battery box back in and that should be good with my master cylinder. The, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the starter solenoid in, which goes on the front of the firewall. I give you a diagram that shows it's look, facing the firewall. It's on the left side. That's where the master is. This is where the starter is. And then they give you another figure showing that it's actually going through one of the tabs on the left side as you face it. And then you're going to match drill a, a number uh, 11 to the other side of it. And there's some bolts and nuts to attach it. And the starter solenoid just bolts on to the firewall. One side is onto the tab, which is on the right as you look at it. The other side has a large washer, not a thick washer, a large washer against the firewall. I purchased the um, option of a remote charging post. That gets installed apparently to the front bottom of the firewall. Um, there's a parts diagram, parts list and a bag of parts. I did not find any text uh, or other figures. I went through the manual a couple times, so I'm assuming I'm just going to install it from following, uh, following the parts diagram. 
Uh, the first thing is this gets attached to the starter solenoid on the battery side and then the parts apparently just go and attach to the bottom of the firewall. I did a little research on this uh, charging post. It does attach to the bottom of the cowl and I was and it actually goes on the outside and this two gauge wire comes in and is actually outside on the bottom of the plane and if you look at the cowl there's actually a big opening where the exhaust pipes come out and everything else so that's how this works but I just need to pick a spot on the cowl and get this get this attached not too difficult okay so I've connected this on to the front of my firewall hanging down as I've shown in the pictures this goes to the battery side of the starter solenoid not the master solenoid but the starter solenoid which means the only time this is going to have juice or access to the battery is when the master switch is on because the master switch feeds the juice to the battery solenoid um, so if you're trying to charge your battery through this by hooking this up to a charger you're going to have to turn your master switch on to charge. Um, that's interesting, uh, but that, that's the way the design. I would think this would go to the master solenoid, so you always would have current out to here. Um, but that's, that's the way it's installed. So if I come over here, I've got it hooked up to the battery side. Here's my battery side coming in. Here's my cable to the jack. And I drop down. And it goes on the front side of the firewall underneath this will be exposed i think there's some drag issues there but that's probably not a lot and then this boot will go on over it and um i gotta figure out where i'm gonna put this cable and how i'm gonna tie it but right now i'm just gonna leave it attached until um until i need to adjust that cable somehow well that's a good place to end uh i'm trying to keep the segments a little bit shorter um, that section took 10.4 build hours. That brings my build time to 782.6 hours. As I've mentioned previously, that does not include my research time and watching other builder videos and studying manuals and asking questions on the forum. Uh, that's build hours, so probably not the fastest build out there, but, but we're getting through it. Um, in the next episode, we do some more firewall forward installation. There's more items that get installed there. Uh, I think then we do the S3, S4 closeout on the flooring. And then from there, we're going to get started on the panel, uh, which is a little daunting. I look in that uh, crate that has the panel, and there's just miles of harnesses and boxes. And I'm starting to watch videos on kind of the steps on that. Uh, so we'll get going on the panel. So thanks a lot for watching. And remember, dream it, just build it.